Hello everyone, Magdalena here, Wealth of Coins. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in this video, I wanted to share with you um, what I've been up to during my holidays and um, what I brought from holidays and uh, how it is connected to my spiritual path of Slavic paganism. So, first of all, I wanted to talk about a place that is called uh, Święta Lipka, which means Holy Linden, Holy Linden Tree. And there is a sanctuary there uh, that, uh, well, we have records that the cult started at least in 14th century. But it's, for me, it's very probable that it was there even before that, because it has a really strong pagan uh, features, namely the sacred tree and the goddess. So <laughs> uh, I went there because we were in the Mazur Mazuria uh, district of Poland, is the lake district where we went just to relax, but I thought that it's a great opportunity for me to to visit a place like that. So we went and the, there is, um, right now, there is a Baroque church standing there, which is much later uh, built, but it's, uh, it's magnificently restored and well preserved and it's uh, yeah in a great condition. They have um, great organs with figures that are moving. Maybe I will insert um, a video of it uh, here because I recorded some. Anyway, my son loved it. He really enjoyed all the sparkles. And I myself uh, really, really enjoyed uh, that this image, this image that is so sacred to me, the tree and the goddess, was present everywhere, on the front of the church, uh, inside of the church, um, on some um, sculptures outside of the church. It was just her, and I thought I would take her home with me. She will be, like, really welcome on my altar. So... This is what I brought with me, and yeah, maybe, oh yeah. Also, I brought some postcards. So this is uh, a postcard like commemoration of the apparition of uh, Mother of God. Well, the story is basically that uh, she appeared. Um, in front of a man who was in prison and she gave him a piece of wood to make a, a wooden figure of herself with little Jesus. He did that and uh, thanks to her he got released and then put the, his sculpture on the, on the linden tree. And soon many miracles started happening. Now this is the church by the way. And it says uh, Święta Lipka and in German Heilige Linde. So Holy Linden. Anyway, um, so people started worshipping and wanted to take the figure to the nearby town. But it, uh, when they took it during the day, she returned during the night. She didn't want to stay uh, in town. She wanted to be there on her tree. And this is a story that we hear uh, in many countries, many cultures, uh, of the stubbornness of, <laughs> of holy uh, figures and such. It's just a thing. You're supposed to worship in the sacred place. And it was the tree. The tree is not there anymore. It got probably destroyed during the ages. But uh, inside the church... You, you will see it on my pictures. Uh, there is a, like a um, tree made from metal where she is. So 
And what I wanted to add also, it was pretty common for Slavic people to put images of Mother Mary on linden trees, specifically. It was uh, said the sacred tree of the goddess. So this is it. Yeah, she's also, this is how, it, how you call it, monstrance. This is where the host is kept. So it's also in the shape of the tree. And look, she's there. She's in the center. And there are little people worshipping. Then, yeah, then there is her image inside of the church. Surrounded by the leaves. And this is uh, from the altar. There is a really big... Um, picture painting well painting covered with silver and gold and it's um, it's a painting from this church like she's called the uh, mother mary of święta lipka so these are my uh, <laughs> findings from that place Next up, what I wanted to say, uh, yeah, we went also, this was later when we were in the southern part of Poland, um, we decided to visit a sacred mountain of Ślęża, which had been a sacred mountain for many centuries, like from ancient times, and we have... Um, we know that it was a place of worship even in really old times and there are traces of also of the Celtic and German worship and Slavic so very international there <laughs> and it's very famous of course like on many other sacred mountains there is um, a Catholic church on top but there are, um, for a Slavic pagan, there are many other interesting things there. Uh, many legends to be heard. And um, I was told by my friend Asha. Hi, Asha. We managed to meet on that day. It was awesome. I'm so happy. But she told me that if I go from the top, I go down a bit to um, so-called uh, sacred spring. I will find a um, figure of uh, Perun, or Yash, as I call him, so the thunder god. And I did, and I recorded him for you, so you will see. Um, from what I know, uh, he usually is not so adorned with flowers and offerings, but I was lucky. I was just lucky because I was there only a few days after um, uh, Slavic pagan society uh, celebrated there uh, so yeah so I was I was in luck and what's also interesting well I I prayed there and uh, it was a very weird day because it was so hot and when we went down from the mountain out of nowhere there was such a strong rain, like for 10 minutes, but it turned the streets into little rivers and then it disappeared. And I know it may, it's just, it just happens sometimes, but, but I choose to uh, see it as a little bit of a sign from Yash.
sacred mountains, uh, Mount Schlenza. It's very hot today. It's like 30 degrees, very sunny, but we made it. We did it. We just had some lunch and uh, later on we will be meeting some friends. So so it's uh, it's great and also we want to find uh, to look for a sacred spring with the statue of uh, thunder god. So exciting and it's it's so green here. It's lovely. Found him. Look at that. There are a lot of offerings here. Isn't it beautiful? There was a candle as well. So beautiful. Other than that, uh, the the area of Schlenja has been since ancient times a source for mining a serpentine stone. And actually, when you walk there, you see those dark green stones just in you know in the earth. And I picked one for myself. Look at that. It's nice and green. And yeah, and I was not sure whether it is serpentine, um, but then I showed it to Asha and she said, oh yeah, <laughs> so this is my stone from our hike. And then I got a present from Asha. This is uh, like a symbol of the mountain. This is, you see, there's uh, Schlenja uh, and it's a stone bear that it's very it's very very old and it has this this x on it so it's always reproduced with the x and there are on on this mountain there are many other very very old stone figures that are pretty famous but yeah i got the bear so happy <laughs> and what i also did this is this is my little jar <laughs> with earth with soil inside. So, as some of you know, I, I live abroad. This is my little kovrat, kovrut. Um, no matter. See, it's just a jar for jam. But I'm using it um, because I'm living abroad. I feel sometimes, you know, really homesick. And I thought that. Um, it would be a good idea for me to just take some soil from places important to me. So I took some from uh, in like in front of our old house in Warsaw and some from the village where my from where my father is from and where I spent a lot of my childhood. Um, and then last year when I went to uh, Wisagura also and um, a sacred mountain and um, I was there last year so I took some soil from there with the blessing of, of Slavic gods <laughs> and and yeah so now I took some from Schlenja so see there is some fresh really dark soil there and this is this is always always on my altar so so yeah I took some And lastly, lastly, this beautiful shawl. So I bought it just, you know, in a tourist area, but I don't have the means to really show this fully to you, but you can imagine how it looks like when spread out. So this is, this is a very typical um, folk style um, shawl. In Poland usually women would wear it on their heads it's not done much anymore 
but they are still very popular as a souvenirs as well. And I love them. I love this teal color. There's also deeper teal here. This is more like uh, brighter. This is darker. And yeah, so these are traditional motifs. And I also see similarities of these to traditional motifs used since like really really many centuries on um, pisanki which are painted eggs that we make for easter and yeah if you search my, my videos you will you will see how i made mine anyway i have these um patterns that are um yeah this is like a little catalog of popular motifs on those painted eggs as and, and as you can see these are oh, there these are pretty uh, pretty similar here wait a minute these are hearts these are hearts and these are trees so they just remind me of these you see somehow and what's also interesting uh, some time ago I had the opportunity to talk to talk to an Indian lady who was doing an event near in our neighborhood and she was she was just painting uh, traditional henna um, patterns on people's hands and to in introduce kids a bit to that culture and she had a book with traditional motifs and patterns and I looked through this and I found that there are many that really remind me of these and I showed her in my phone I found these and she was really surprised and she said oh yeah something like this or like this or like this very very common in our traditions so it was fascinating for me, especially because, yeah, I've been researching a bit how Slavic culture shows some uh, similarities with um, Indo-Iranian uh, traditions. So, yeah, it was very interesting for me and, and I bought myself this beautiful shawl. So I will I will insert those videos and pictures that I made and and. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, please ask. If you've enjoyed, please let me know in comments or a thumbs up because it motivates me to make more videos. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Yeah, one last thing I almost forgot. I already posted about it on uh, Instagram. But thanks to Asha who showed me her drum, Yes, I bought myself a drum. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. And it's awesome. Yeah, this is my camera holder. Maybe I should get rid of it for the moment. And, ah, uh, yeah, right now I, I would have to hold it in my hand so you could maybe like this. Okay. I wonder if the camera catches the vibration. Well, it's still pretty flat because I'm holding it with my belly. But anyway, I have a shamanic drum and it's awesome. So thank you, Asha, for uh, introducing me to this lovely, lovely thing. I've been drumming almost every day since I got it. It's made in Poland, by the way. And yeah, I love it. Again, thank you so much, everyone. Bye.